I was um, a freshman and Terry had transferred there from SMU his sophomore year. And so my friend said a new, a new boy had come, a new guy had come from SMU, but they didn't think they could get very well acquainted with him. And so they just said, we'll just kind of ignore him. But anyway, um, I thought he was pretty cute. And he came to the dorm and asked me out. And uh, he was kind of a challenge for me because he was quieter than I was and uh, more dignified than I was, I guess. And so we just, we were opposites, but I guess opposites attract. The smile was uh, infectious. Uh, you can't be around Marty very long, and that's been true from the first day I met her to the present, that she, uh, she's known for a smile. But she's a great conversationalist. Uh, she uh, draws people in conversationally. Uh, she became a social crutch for me. I'm not uh, as gifted socially as she is, and so uh, when it came to entertaining guests at the university, uh, I always knew that Marty would take care of all the conversation that we needed and uh, that my part was just to uh, shake hands and make sure that uh, everyone was having a good time. As far as a specific event, I doubt that there's anything that would top the uh, event in 1992 when uh, a sitting president of the United States came to our campus. Couldn't have scripted a more beautiful March morning uh, the Bradford pair were in full bloom in the Thelma Gaylord Forum. Uh, the wind was even still. We, how on earth in a march in Oklahoma, the wind was calm. And uh, it was just a picture-perfect day. And of course, the next day, here's this article in the New York front page of the New York Times featuring Oklahoma Christian. And so from a president's standpoint, why one single event, that probably stands out. I think that it's easy to look back and to measure the growth of a school by the facilities because that's what's tangible and what you see coming out of the ground. But in terms of some of the things that we did during those years that I have a lot of pride in, uh, the first engineering program within our uh, fellowship, um, taking on the work of the Christian Chronicle and uh, letting it be a uh, a voice for churches of Christ all over the, uh, the world, uh, putting the first uh, master's degree uh, program in place, uh, originally in Bible, but now seeing other programs like the MBA and the engineering master's program uh, come along. Uh, some of those initiatives, uh, the Vienna Studies Program, uh, those are things that are not tied to brick and mortar, but yet program-wise, I think, move the university along in a good way. Uh, Oklahoma Christian made big advancements because people perceive that not only it is an institution, but the people who work there were real uh, and genuinely committed to the, the spiritual aspect of the campus. We had a great team and for many, many years that team stayed intact. We had continuity of that administrative team. I think that helped us a lot. We weren't into a period of constant turnover in any of those roles but uh, each had his role to fill. Uh, we complimented one another and uh, found success uh, along the way. It was really a, a great opportunity to be part of a, a team and to do something on a, on a team basis. We were very dedicated to the idealism of Oklahoma Christian and all she represented, um, and that included the, the people who worked there and the students who came there. But the other side of that is, how do you balance that with your family? We were raising two daughters. In fact, raised uh, a niece lived with us five of those years that we were at the president's uh, office. And uh, how do you make time for family? And I'd say that was something that, um, it was easier to master the skills of leading the university than it was to master the time element of giving family appropriate time without feeling guilty one place or the other. And Marty had to, to, to handle that from her standpoint and get my attention a time or two uh, to make it all work out. We had two daughters that really made us proud and, and didn't give us a lot of trouble. So we were lucky in that standpoint, you know, didn't get into a lot of trouble and things like that. So we look back and they've, they've said they had a wonderful life. Sometimes we felt like we didn't give them enough time when we were real busy with either the university or the Oklahoma City uh, community. 
but um, we came through it okay. We, we never uh, scripted or planned in advance that we would uh, end up at a place called Horseshoe Bay, Texas, but our daughters, one lives in Midland, one lives in Austin, and uh, it just happens to be that we're tucked in between them here. Uh, Marty and I spend a lot of time with our, our daughters and sons-in-law and seven grandchildren, and this is a great playground for them. We spend a lot of time with both families here, with the Clarks being in Austin and the Browns being in Midland. And uh, so family has been very important to us. And I think as, as you get older, it becomes so important. I mean, it's really what you have. Well, and I have to say, too, that you we've both stayed passionate about Christian education, and last year, was it seven of our nine graduating seniors ended up in a Christian university, which has not been true down here. So Terry still holds up the banner, and we got four of them at Oklahoma four. Christian. But when we get bored, we jump on the golf cart, and off we go. So we just go around the back of the house and go straight to the course. You can't walk here, though. I have been picked up by the marshal twice. We're all old, and we should be able to walk, but it's against the rules to walk the golf course because they don't want to hold people up. So uh, sometimes we'll go out in the evenings and take a club and walk because we like to, but during the day when the marshals are here, we know we'll get picked up, so we don't do that. <laughs> we have a lot of fun on the golf course. We've traveled a lot of places to enjoy uh, playing golf. Uh, we enjoy traveling and we have friends that we uh, travel with on a regular basis. Uh, uh, this summer we were in St. Louis with uh, Jerry and Laura Beth Job and uh, Jim and Anna Wilson seeing the Cardinals play. We are very passionate about Cardinal baseball, continue to be. And uh, we uh, I've spent some time writing some books, uh, none of which are going to win any Pulitzer Prizes, but which has been good catharsis, uh, kind of sharing the story and some of that about Oklahoma Christian and our days there. So um, all of these things have uh, added to our life, certainly the church, I've served uh, the last uh, six or seven years as an elder there. Uh, we've got a brand new facility, which we're very proud of and uh, serves us well, and having good outreach in the community with that little church. So uh, we're, uh, we have a lot of things to keep us busy. We don't lack for things to keep us busy. One of my passions has been the Kindred Sisters, that we call it the Kindred Sisters, which is a Bible class that we have in this home a lot. And uh, some of my friends and I started that eight years ago, and we have about, we have 60 on the roster, and about 40 of them come. And so that's let us get acquainted with a lot of people. In the evening, we went out to play a round of golf, and Terry cannot let a golf ball go, a lost golf ball. I can, but he has to find it. And it was in uh, some water that was in, uh, off a deep cliff on hole number nine out here. And he thought he could get the golf ball. And so he held on to a limb and he reached out way deep to get it and that limb broke. And all I heard was a big yelp and a splash. And his eyes were as wide as saucers because that's the snake hole. We've seen lots of big snakes in there. He had to swim down quite a ways to come out. I couldn't pull myself up. I, and Marty was standing there laughing and ran back to, to the get car the to get the camera to shoot a picture of it. The camera, it turned out, was in my pocket. So, so we didn't get a picture. <laughs>